Hey, good morning, family. Pastor Artie here with your man and coffee this morning. You know, I was looking at my Facebook post the other day and I saw somebody posted, what's a good Bible-believing church? And of course, we got all these answers, you know, they teach, you know, book by book, verse by verse, precept above precept, the full counsel of God's word. You know, I agree with that. That's true. You should teach the whole Bible. But here's the thing. How do you teach the whole Bible? Do you teach it the way you perceive it? Or do you teach it the way God meant it? You know, so many times we get confused. And we've been confused for years. I know I, I was. You know, I was uh, led down that primrose path of saying, you know, we go from Genesis to Revelation, every book, every line, every verse. And yet, they were, na I just couldn't connect the dots. I was having so many problems. Every time a pastor would talk, I would sit there and I'd take all these notes and, and it's just like, you know, well, this doesn't match up with this and this doesn't make sense with that. How come? If the Bible is perfect, then God's word should match up somehow. And it does. And I'm going to let you know, there's a pre-cross and there's a post-cross way to teach the word of God. You know, the pre-cross tells us that if you do things, then God will do things. The post-cross says God's already done it. All you have to do is act upon it. So let's kind of take some, uh, let's take some of the big ones here. Forgiveness, unforgiveness, and love. Okay? So we're going to do a little jumping around in the Bible, so I hope you guys take notes. Mark eleven twenty six. It tells us, but if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which in heaven will forgive your trespasses. Now this is Jesus talking. You see, Jesus operated pre-cross to all those who listen. It says, but if ye, which means you, if you don't do it, then God won't do it. There, if you don't forgive, or you harbor unforgiveness, then God will not forgive you and harbor unforgiveness against you. And that's just fact. That's what the Word says. Now, go with me to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. It says, For if ye forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Right there again. If you're harboring unforgiveness and don't forgive, then God will not forgive you. Old covenant. It's an old covenant. It's pre-cross. Verse 15. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Mm. How many of you have, been, have heard that word over and over, have been taught under forgiveness, this is what you should do? I did. And as a pastor, I taught it that way for many, many years. Until God turned a light on and said, you know what? You're teaching my word entirely wrong. And because I read in 2 Timothy where he said to rightly divide the word. And I was thinking, well, what the heck does that mean? Pre-cross, post-cross. Turn with me to Ephesians. Here we go. Let's get into the let's get into some some new covenant post cross how we should divide the word rightly how you as Christians should believe today in Ephesians 4:32 it says and be kind one to one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God has or God, for God even as God for Christ sake hath forgiven you. Key on that one word, hath. He's already done it. It's already been done. All you need to do is be kind to one another, love one another, accept one another, forgive one another. Why? Because he's already put that in you, the forgiveness of his love that he took to the cross and given it to you. 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Read it with me. Here we go. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now you wonder why I talk in the King James? Simple, because it makes sense. The other translations don't make sense. It says, for he has forgiven you, and if you do not do it, you, all, you also should do it. You should. It's already in you. He's given it to you. When Jesus went to the cross, what did he take? Did he take the sin of adultery? Yes. Did he take the sin of unforgiveness? Yes. Did he take the sin of sickness? Yes. All those things he took to the cross. Jesus has forgiven you, so now you can forgive yourself. It's already been done. It's post-cross. He's already done it. What about love? Let's look at love really quick. Go with me to Mark chapter 12. And we're going to be in verse 30 and 31. Okay, we're going to talk about a little bit of love. So we talked about unforgiveness and forgiveness. We showed how the Old Testament and the Gospels under Jesus talked about you need to do things so God will do things. Then later in the Gospel of Grace, he tells you, you need to not do these things because he's already done it for you. He's given it to you. Okay, let's look at love. Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Notice, you again. You shall do this. You shall love. You shall, uh, with your strength, your mind, your soul, your body. And then, you shall love your neighbor. Why? Because you want God to love you. Right? That's what pastors tell you in church all the time. Every time they preach this word, every time they preach this scripture, that's what they're telling you. You should do this. Because God wants to pour out into you. God's already poured it out in you. He has given it to you. God has already taken it to the cross. Go with me to 1 John. First John chapter 4, in verse 19, okay? We're going to look at post-cross now, what God has already done. It says, we love him because, what? He first loved us. He's already loved you. He's already poured into you that love. All you got to do is pour it back out to somebody. You don't have to sit there and say, well, I don't know how to love. Yes, you do, because God loved you. Romans 5.5, 5, and we're going to end there. Romans 5 verse 5 tells us this. Now, hope maketh not a shame. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. God loved you so much that he shed his love into your life through the Holy Spirit. He has poured that love into you so that you can love. You cannot sit there and say, I hate that person. You don't hate them. You need to love them because God poured his love into you. He loved you so much that he gave his very soul of love and power into you today. Don't be confused by the pre-cross. What Jesus said, that's all well and good. We can learn from that, but measure it up and bounce it against the post-cross way of living. This is how he wants us to live. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. You know, God never, 
never will require anything of you until he's put it in you completely by his spirit. He's not going to require it to you to preach unless he puts it in you. He's not going to require you to love unless he's put his love into you. He's not going to require you to forgive unless he's put his forgiveness into you already. If you can't produce fruit, then you better take a hard look at your life. Are you living in the stinking thinking of the if and then of the Bible? Or are you living under the grace and power of God, of the post-cross that he's already given unto you? He's enabled you, he's equipped you, he's put everything in you. He's put his life, his love, his blood into you. You are but his tree to bear fruit. So if you're not bearing fruit today, family, I pray that you seek out where your heart is. Because if you're not bearing fruit, I really doubt that you're walking with Christ today. Because you should be. You know, I could have just given everything up when I left the church. I could have said, no more, I'm done. I'd been hurt by several churches, and it's like, I don't need, I don't need this. I don't need this so-called good Bible-believing church. Because <laughs> every Bible-believing church I went to was a nightmare for me. I'm just being honest. So I could have given up. I could have said no more, but what did God say? He goes, you continue to preach my word any way you can. So here it is, the man and coffee. I'm preaching to you and giving you the word of God that God has given to me. I want to produce fruit in my life that God has put the fruit in me. I want to produce it in you so that you can produce fruit as well. So today, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everybody out there that is not producing fruit because they don't understand. They don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. They don't know the difference between pre-cross and post-cross. They just kind of mix it all together, shake it up, and hope that it'll separate the right way. Well, the only thing it does is separates the wrong way. Today, Father, in Jesus' name, pour out into their heart your spirit. Shed that love abroad into their hearts that you've given to us today so that we know how to forgive because you've already forgiven us. We don't have to walk in unforgiveness because you've already taken the unforgiveness out of us. We don't have to learn how to love because you've already loved us. We just need to act upon those things and love people. So Father, work in their lives, work in their hearts. May they make a solid commitment to you today. And it's so easy. Just say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I just need your forgiveness. I need you to pour out that same love that Artie's talking about into my heart today. And I want to live for you. I want to work for you. I want to love you. I want to do those things that you've called me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, if these videos are any blessing to you, Please share it with your friends. I know you got some friends out there that are walking in indecision and, and turmoil because they don't know how to rightly divide this book. This book has to be rightly divide, divided. Otherwise, God wouldn't have told you to. It's not just teaching the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's teaching the truth of God's Word pre-cross and teaching the truth of God's Word post-cross. You're either going to teach the law or you're going to teach grace. Man, I'd rather walk in grace and the law any day. May God bless you. May you share these videos with others because I know that they need help. And may you subscribe to the, um, to the video, I mean to our YouTube channel. Please guys, just go there, subscribe. Every time I put these videos up, you'll get them. And I hope that they'll bless you and make your day a little better because you are rightly dividing the word of truth today. Linda and I love you. Have a blessed weekend. We'll talk to you real soon. And the rest of the staff here at Rock Ministries, we love you guys and we're praying for you every day because we want you to walk in the truth of God's word, rightly dividing it and living by the grace that God has given to you. May you have a blessed day and we'll talk to you real soon. I'm going to go finish my coffee. Love you guys. Bye.